Container homes are one of my favorite types of alternative housing to feature on this channel. And this week I'm showcasing perhaps the most beautiful and functional tiny house I've ever seen. And it all fits in just one 20 foot container. Cam, the owner and builder, took designing a container home as a personal challenge. Not only does he have multiple moving pieces inside to maximize the living space, we are sitting in the living area and the bedroom all in one. He also decided to build the entire house over a running stream. Why? Maybe the better question is, why not? <laughs> Hi, I'm Cam. This is my shipping container home. I like to call it Cam's container. I've been living in the container for a few months now. I built the home myself, so I do have some design experience. I went to architecture school for six years, got my master's, and thankfully it has led me to building this. So this container is 20 feet long. It's a side open shipping container, so the interior dimensions equal 125 square feet. I really didn't want to compromise on some things, so the idea of the bed raising and lowering from the ceiling and the sliding closet to just maximize as much square footage as possible. So my shipping container is located over a stream. Getting it here was a process of figuring out how it could span this. And now a shipping container is really stiff a metal welded box. So it doesn't need much, but it needs to be guided over. And so I acquired some telephone poles by running up to the road while these workers were there and convincing them to leave a few behind. So I used those and bought some I-beams and then had the container delivery driver carefully ooch the shipping container across on the I-beams and metal slides on metal, so it went smoothly. It was very scary though. This is Cam's container. Let's go inside. Welcome. And we are sitting in the living area and the bedroom all in one and the foyer. So you have your entrance, you have your nice living area, comfortable seating, lay back, watch TV, enjoy the view. It also gives you extra storage down low. So you have two big drawers of storage. And then this side of the wall is all my mechanical area as well. You have the electrical panel, hot water heater, heating and cooling mini split, all of the electrical and water, propane, all come in through this side. And then we have the bedroom as well. So this lowers down a few steps to do it. Move the pillows, fold these down. This becomes a bedside table. Same with this one right here. And here is the remote. Pretty simple. And down it goes. And then you have your bed. And you're only really doing it twice a day, so it's kind of loud, but it's not too bad. You have a full-size mattress here. And then what's nice about this is tiny houses are always hard to make your bed in. They're, your bed's always in the corner, your bed's like pushed away into a certain area. So what's nice about this one is you can stand back here and get your fitted sheet on, your other sheets along the bottom, makes your bed, making your bed in the morning way easier than traditional tiny houses. And if you really don't want to make your bed, you can just squish it up into the ceiling and call it a day. And 
of uneasy. Back to the living room. Easy as that. So the winch is hidden under here. It just has this pulley down. TV stays down here, up against the wall, so you can use it in the living room, put down the bed, and you don't even have to change, pause your Netflix. So we're in the kitchen now, just a few small steps away from the living room bedroom. Have this RV stove here to save space, counter space, as you can fold this down. Have a nice far big farmhouse sink here. And then nice drawers. I built this whole kitchen out of plywood and a, a big fan of the sexy ply, which is Baltic birch, but we'll call it sexy ply from now on. Did have help with the interior design on this from a friend, Callie Goss. Thankfully she was around to add in elements of this nice backsplash and the color. And then if we spin around to this side, we have our table and eating area slash desk, whatever you need at the time. So easy as folding it up. And ta-da, you have your extra counter space here. So two of you can work, one could cook, one could do dishes, another chopping everything over here. It's a good flow. So we're in the bathroom now, but we have a dry flush toilet. We have more open shelves over here. This mini vanity is really nice. And then we have the exciting part of the bathroom right here. So showers you only use for, if it's you're by yourself, what, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on who it is. Maybe someone does five, but the rest of the time it just sits there. So I have created a sliding closet to ex expose the shower, you do your business, shower away. You do have to let it dry a little bit before you can slide it back. But you can slide it back over. And then when you do open it, you need your door to close if you have another person in here. So this door slides open. So that's for doing your business in the bathroom, but for showering, you can shower and be in your walk-in closet. The container itself is a side open container. It's 20 feet long. This whole 20 foot long side opens up. And when the deck's not here, the doors can close and you can ship this thing anywhere in the world still. So this wall is built just inside the doors. It's all stick frame because that's what I know and how to build. And then insulation is spray foam. And then the deck itself is rough sawn lumber and then i had it sticking out of the forklift spots of the container itself and it was cantilevered out and to keep it safe i have added in posts and added on a railing and then this side is the utility side so the mini split heating and cooling propane comes in here water comes in here and then you get a electrical outlet I really like the idea of the shipping container itself. It's used for so many different things and the idea of living in one, it seemed like a pretty interesting idea. And then also having the challenge of designing around it. Plans for the future. This is live on Airbnb. And then for myself, I am continuing on with uh, two tiny house on wheels. Uh, both of them are going to be 24 feet and then from there continue building and designing and creating. For the few months that I was in it, really enjoyed living in it. It was very comfortable. It was also fun. It was 
just you kind of, especially because I built it myself, you go, I got this little giddy feeling almost kind of when you're laying in bed and you are looking around and you're like, wow, I, I built this. It's allowed me to grow as a person and a builder and a designer. It's been a lot of fun though. I'd say it's for the better. I will see you next week with another awesome alternative home tour. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so that you get a notification.